Okay, so guys, so for the first movement, like I said, we're gonna be going for back thickness. We're gonna use this lat pull-down machine here, which has a really nice, unique motion. It kind of is like, if you see bodybuilders when they go into a back double bicep shot, it kind of mimics that motion. The technique that I'm gonna have Stan use on this movement is a four second hold in the contracted position. And I also want you to watch his torso position when he does this, because the main thing you wanna do is when you come down to the bottom, you're going for that contraction, you want your chest to come up high, have a slight arch in the lower back, and that's the way you're gonna get maximum contraction. So he's actually taking a close grip, which would seem counterintuitive, but the way this machine works, it comes out wide. So he's gonna get mid-back. Okay. Comes to the bottom. Full contraction for four seconds. Counting in his head. Deep squeeze. He's also focusing on pulling from the elbows. The elbows are drawing his hands down. He's not pulling from the hands. Then he'd be hitting biceps more. Think about pulling from your elbows. Squeeze. This is gonna work everything across this upper back, even with thickness up here. Okay, so for the second movement, again, we're staying with a back thickness. We're gonna do a wide grip seated cable row here on this uh, awesome machine. Uh, again, we're gonna be using the contracted position technique. However, we're gonna do something different than the first exercise. We're gonna do something that I call muscle priming, uh, which the, means the first rep is gonna be a 10 second hold in the contracted position. Why do I call it muscle priming? because what we're doing is we're priming the muscle for what's, what's to come. And also when you use a technique like this, especially with the contracted position, you hold that position, it gives you a much better mind-muscle connection to the muscle you're working because it's almost like just by holding that contraction, all those muscles get really, really pumped and you actually just kind of like can get in touch with exactly what you're trying to feel. So it grows really well for the rest of the set. After that first 10 second hold, we're gonna do 10 good clean reps and then we're actually gonna, just for the fun of it, we're gonna finish off the final rep with another 10 second hold just to completely annihilate the muscle. Again, there's another great technique, especially for you guys getting ready for shows. Okay, setting himself up. He's gonna sit pretty much up straight. He's not gonna do any of that far leaning back that sometimes you see guys do on this machine to try to swing and use more weight. Holding the first rep for 10 seconds. He's getting in touch with all the muscles in the upper back. He's also damaging muscle fibers, bringing more muscle fibers into play. And when you could do that, you effectively build more muscle. So you can see his form. This is the way Stan always trains. His form is perfect. His technique is perfect. He doesn't swing weights, use momentum. He's only using muscular action and squeezing everything across the upper back the rhomboids, the mid traps, the upper traps. Of course, getting some lats as well. It's getting close to that last rep. Here it is. Finishing by holding for another 10 seconds. He's squeezing as hard as he possibly can. He's contracting these muscles. He's not just holding it. All right, guys. So we're gonna finish off, not the whole back workout, just the thickness portion of the workout with something that I sometimes love to do in my training, which is after we've kind of hit the muscle with techniques that tend to tear apart and break down muscle fibers. I like to pump as much blood into the muscle as possible with a high rep uh, exercise to finish. So what we're gonna do, of course, is pick a real hard one here. We're gonna do <laughs> bent over rows here on a Smith machine, and we're gonna do sets of 20 to 25 reps. But you're gonna see the form, the technique, will not break through the whole set. In other words, there's not gonna be any momentum or swinging. We're gonna get 20 to 25 clean reps. <clears throat> All right, guys. Stan's setting himself up. He's starting his long set. And as you can see, even though he's going for a set of at least 25 reps, 20 to 25, he's doing really, really good form. He's still squeezing the muscle. You can see that his body positioning. He's bent over almost at a 90 degree angle to really, really hit that upper back. Great contractions he's getting on every rep. 
He's just filling that entire back with blood, oxygen, nutrients, helping the muscles get into recovery mode. How many did we get? Come on, get it. All right, guys. Uh, all three of us are exhausted already, but we have to start part two of the workout, just like I said. So now we're gonna go into the belly of the lats. So you're gonna see us using more of a close grip uh, movements where the elbows remain close to the body at the contracted point. And we're gonna start off here with this fly flying around my face, <laughs> which is really annoying. Uh, so we're starting off with this uh, regular pull down, close grip pull down. And we're gonna use the priming technique on this one as well. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna hold the stretch position. We really, really wanna stretch out those lats because when you stretch a muscle under tension, studies even show that that causes an anabolic response automatically. So it's a great way to facilitate muscle growth. We're gonna start off with a 10 second stretch and then we're gonna do 10 good quality reps using the close grip, arching the back, chest high. And then on the final rep, on the 10th rep, we're gonna hold the stretch again as a bonus for another 10 seconds to finish it off. Very intense, intense technique. Come on, here we go. Okay, so Stan's gonna start out with a 10 second stretch. The key to holding this stretch for 10 seconds, and really feeling it, is to let your shoulders release. If you don't let your shoulders release, you're gonna stay slightly contracting the latch. You're not gonna get that stretch. You gotta be comfortable. Let the shoulders release so it's pulling on the lats from origin to insertion. Then he starts to set. Now that he's primed the muscle, not only has he caused fiber damage by doing that, but again, it gives him a good mind-muscle connection so he's gonna feel those lats contracting even stronger now than if he didn't prime the muscle. And as you can see, his form is still picture perfect. As Dave gets to the side with the camera, you could see slight arch in the lower back, chest high when it comes down to contract. Okay, so uh, next up on the torture list, which is great for torture, Jim. Um, we're gonna use this really, really cool uh, seated row machine. They have so many cool pieces of equipment here to use, so it's like mind-boggling yeah. trying to figure out which one to use, but I chose this one. We're gonna do it unilaterally. So it's a basic seated row, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold again the stretch position, but this time we're gonna hold every single rep for four full seconds. What you really, again, wanna focus on when you're holding the stretch is letting the shoulder release, because if you don't, like I said, if you don't let it release and you keep it tense, the lat is not gonna completely stretch. So you wanna almost twist your body, let the shoulder go, and then when you begin your contraction, then you can bring the shoulder back in and squeeze to the top. A very, very difficult technique again, but the stretch and the tension will produce muscle growth. Stan's about to start his seated row. As you can see, we're using that close grip so the elbow's riding right next to his body, which is going to target the lats, not isolate, because of course you can't take the other back muscles out of the equation. As you can see, he's holding the stretch position for four seconds, counting it down in his head before he carefully comes back and muscles it back and contracts. So he's working right here along from origin to insertion of the lats. All right guys, so we're finishing off the workout finally. Uh, now we're gonna finish again with high reps, 20 to 25. This time I'm gonna use a more isolated movement for the high rep movement, not a compound. So we're gonna do a stiff arm pull down. Uh, we're actually gonna do it using an incline bench, which actually makes the movement a little bit more strict uh, than just standing free. So it's just a variation um, that you could try if you want, if you've been doing the regular version. So again, we're gonna do 20 to 25 reps. We're gonna use good form, no swinging, no momentum, get a good contraction in the lats. And this is one of the best movements you could do for building lat width right up, re really high, right under the armpits. So it's uh, a very, very good movement um, if you're looking for wider lats, especially if you're a competitor. All right, as you can see, I stand. I have the bench, the bench set, not quite at 90 degrees, maybe about 80, 85. And as you can see, he's starting the movement at the top with the bar just about equal to the top of his head. So this will actually work the lats and the terrace muscle over its full range of motion, giving a slight stretch at the top. Now this angle forward that the bench actually uh, creates for his torso 
uh, will create a much better contraction than if you're standing straight up and down. His arms are pretty much straight. It's okay to be straight or have a slight bend in the elbow, but you don't want to go too much. And also his thumbs are over the bar on the same side as the other fingers. This helps you prevent from getting any triceps into the movement. And obviously Stan and my training were all about isolating the muscle that we're targeting as much as possible.